Hello and welcome to WWDC. Welcome. My name is Steve Breen and I'm engineer on the UIKit team. And in this video, we're going to chat a bit about advances in Diffable Data Source for iOS 14. So before we dive into our content, I'm going to highlight a portion of the companion sample project for this video entitled Emoji Explorer. Now, this sample has a lot of interesting components baked right into its design. Now in this first section, there's a horizontally scrolling grid of emoji. This is a pretty common design element in many of today's apps. OK, so this section in the middle of Emoji Explorer is especially novel. It's an expandable, collapsible, outline-styled UI, which is new in iOS 14. And finally, in this last section, there's a design that looks suspiciously like a UI table view right here in the middle of our UI collection view. OK, that's Emoji Explorer, and we'll be referring back to this throughout our video. OK, so to review, Diffable Data Source, which was introduced in iOS 13, greatly simplifies the management of UI state through the addition of a new snapshot data type. Snapshots encapsulate the entire UI state via the use of unique section and item identifiers. So when updating a UI collection view, we first create a new snapshot, populate it with the current UI state, and apply it to the data source. Diffable Data Source computes the differences and animates things automatically without any additional work needed from the application developer. So we covered this API in detail in the WWDC 2019 video, Advances in UI Data Sources. And I encourage you to check out that video to learn more. So for iOS 14, we've built on the foundation of Diffable Data Source with two new features, section snapshots and first-class reordering support. Let's chat a bit about section snapshots. For iOS 14, we're adding a new section snapshot right alongside the existing snapshot type we call section snapshots. As the name implies, section snapshots encapsulates the data for a single section in a UI collection view. There are two reasons for this enhancement. First, to allow data sources to be more composable into section size chunks. And second, to allow modeling of hierarchical data, which is needed to support rendering outline style UIs a common visual design found all throughout iOS 14. So let's go back to Emoji Explorer and see how section snapshots are used to build this out in our sample app. First, in our horizontally scrolling section, we are using a single section snapshot to completely model the content found here. Next, in our second section, where we see this expandable, collapsible outline styled section, a second section snapshot is used to model this hierarchical data. And finally, in our list section, we again model the section's content with a third section snapshot. So for Emoji Explorer, we compose our Diffable Data Source from three distinct section snapshots, each representing a single section's content. Let's take a look at some API. So here's a snippet of the new section snapshot API. And check out the SDK for the entire API. So please note that we'll use the term snapshot when we're referring to the original snapshot type introduced in iOS 13, which includes sections and item identifiers. And we'll use the term section snapshot to refer to this new to iOS 14 type. So glancing at this new section snapshot type, we see that it's generic over the item type. Note there's an absence of any kind of section identifier type. Section snapshots just inherently don't know what section they represent. So to add content to our section snapshot, we'll use the new append API. Now notice the optional parent parameter. When supplied, this allows us to create parent-child relationships in the section snapshot needed to model hierarchical data. And we've added two new APIs to UI Collection View Diffable Data Source to accommodate the new section snapshot type. First, we have a new apply method, which takes a section snapshot and a section identifier. Our second new API allows us to retrieve a section snapshot representing a particular section's contents. So next, let's flesh out a code snippet showing how to use snapshots and section snapshots together to build up our collection views content. First, we'll add sections in the order we desire by applying a snapshot to our Diffable data source. And here we see we have the sections in a particular order, recent, top, and suggested. 
Now, after we have the desired section order, we're going to populate the items for each of these sections by applying section snapshots directly to each section. Let's take a look at how to create hierarchical data using this section snapshot API. First, we'll append some root items to our sections. Smiley, nature, food, etc. using the append API. Recall the append method has an optional parent parameter. So when that's not supplied, that means apply these items to the root. So to configure our parent-child relationship, we'll append some child items into a parent item. In this example, the parent item is food. And that's it. We've created a section snapshot which models our application's hierarchical data. OK, so it should be clear by now, section snapshots are capable of representing hierarchical data. Now, at times, it's very convenient to reason about just a portion of this hierarchical data. So in this code snippet, we're interested in getting all the children related to a particular parent item, optionally including the parent in a resultant section snapshot. OK, so next up, let's chat a bit about expansion state. So expansion state is managed as part of a section snapshot state. And when building up a snapshot for display, you can easily determine whether or not a child content is initially visible by setting that item's parent expansion state. You can also query a snapshot to determine if an item is expanded or collapsed. Note that if you mutate a section snapshot's expansion state, this won't apply until you actually apply that to the difficult data source. OK, so when a user interacts with an outline styled UI, which is configured with the new cell outline disclosure accessory, the framework will automatically update the section snapshot with the new expansion state and apply that section snapshot to the data source. Now, often it's usefully notified about expansion state changes caused by these user interactions. For example, you may have a design that requires that a particular parent never collapse. To support this, Difficult Data Source has new APIs for giving applications programmatic control over expansion state changes caused by user interactions. OK, so here are these new APIs. First, we notice Difficult Data Source has a new property called Section Snapshot Handlers. The new Section Snapshot Handlers type is a struct which is generic over item and contains five optional closures. Handle our previously mentioned requirement we could provide a should collapse item handler, which will turn false for a particular parent to avoid collapsing the outline. Now, we also provide support for lazy loading of expensive content with the API snapshot for expanding parent. So this is useful to minimize the amount of content loaded in the initial section snapshot when getting that content is expensive. So you can load that content as needed, depending on the current child snapshot state. So that wraps up section snapshots. Next up, let's chat a bit about reordering APIs added to Difficult Data Source. So one of the advances Difficult Data Source brings is the ability to model our collection views data with unique item identifiers. With these unique item identifiers, it is possible for the framework to automatically commit reordering changes on the application's behalf based on user interactions. But this isn't really enough. Our application needs to be notified that a user-initiated reordering interaction took place so that it can persist the new visual order to the application's backing store, which is its final source of truth. So to support reordering, Difficult Data Source now has a new property, Reordering Handlers. This is a struct which contains three optional closures, can reorder item, will reorder, and did reorder. So to enable reordering via this new API, you first need to supply a can reorder item closure. This will be called when a user attempts to start a reordering interaction. If it returns true, the reordering interaction is allowed to begin. When the user is done with the reordering interaction, the did reorder closure is called to allow your application to commit the new reordering state to your application's source of truth. Note that you must provide both the can reorder item and did reorder closure to enable the reordering feature. OK, so the did reorder closure passes your application a new type in its difficult data source transaction. So transactions supply all the information needed to reason about the update being performed against the difficult data source. First, let's check out the NS difficult data source transaction. This type supplies four basic pieces of information. First, we have the initial snapshot. 
This is the state of the Diffle data source before the update is applied. Next, we have the final snapshot. Now, this is the state of the Diffle data source after the update is applied. And we can use these item identifiers from this snapshot directly to determine the new ordering which we need to commit to our application's source of truth. Additionally, we can see the Swift Standard Lib collection difference is also supplied. And if your application has a data type such as array for the source of truth, we can apply that collection difference directly to that. And lastly, we see a list of section transactions that provide per section details about the sections involved in this reordering update. Section transactions are quite similar. We have one section transaction supplied for each section involved in the reordering update. First off, we can expect the section identifier the section transaction has been applied to. And we also see we have the initial and final section snapshots, along with the collection difference specific to this section's update. OK, so let's check out an example. Here, our backing store is an array of items supplying the source of truth for a single section collection view. Using the Swift Standard Lab collection difference supplied with the transaction, we'll create a new backing store and update our source of truth directly. Well, that wraps up our video today, covering all the advances we brought to Diffable Data Source for iOS 14. Download the sample app. It's full of examples of how to use these new APIs and use this code as a starting point to update your apps to take advantage of these new APIs. And watch the related videos mentioned throughout this talk to go deeper. Thanks for watching.